Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis and to Jacqueline, my newest patron, thank you very much. So Elon was having some fun on Twitter, as you can see, sharing some different images. Now, some people will take this and to say, oh, well, this means Elon's in a good mood and that means good things ahead for Tesla. Sure, if you wanna read the tea leaves like that, I don't have any problem with that. Um, but pictures or not, I think that uh, quarter three and quarter four and what Tesla has on the horizon are going to be very good. But regardless of the performance of Tesla, I personally like to see when Elon is lighthearted and having fun. So Charles Schwab apparently changed their performance rating for Tesla from F to a D. Now they are just underperformed from strongly underperformed, but I want to ask, they get a growth grade as a C. So I'm wondering what it would take to get an A. The correct answer, a better analyst. <laughs> An article from Forbes says that the Model 3 is leading Europe EV sales as the competitor range claims wilt. But all I wanna highlight here is that yes, the Model 3's pricing is definitely more than the ID3 and sometimes three times the price of the Renault Zoe. But according to Schmidt Automotive Research, in the first seven months of 2021, Tesla sold 66,600 Model 3s, almost twice as many as the second place Volkswagen ID3, coming in at 35,400, and the 27,800 Renault Zoes. And of course, now we are adding the Model Y into this mix as well. So in the back half of 2021, things should look even better for Tesla. Ray for Tesla on Twitter shares a rumor that to secure 4680 supply, Tesla China has been talking to current partners CATL and LG. Now one industry insider close to EVE, which is a major Chinese supplier, says Tesla China is discussing to outsource the 4680 design and production to EVE as well based on Tesla's design. Now, before we get carried away saying that this is a great thing, because of course, Tesla having another supplier of 4680s would obviously be a big benefit, there have been rumors of a deal between Tesla and EVE before. So if you go back to May, you can see May 13th, this was one of the headlines from Reuters, Tesla in talks with EVE, I remember covering that. And then a few days later, that report was denied directly by EVE. Now, sure, those rumors weren't specifically about 4680 cells, but we need to keep that in mind. But yes, EVE is a big player out of China and they're best known for their LFP chemistry. So people are assuming and wondering if these 4680 cells, if they do make them for Tesla, if they would be a LFP variant of the 4680. But at the same time, once again, not to get carried away, EVE does make cylindrical batteries. As you can see, they have different form factors. Maybe they're going to add 4680 to this lineup, but I'm showing you this because they do have nickel cobalt manganese and nickel cobalt aluminum as well. So they do indeed do more than just LFP. And of course, I would love this rumor to be true because the more suppliers Tesla has of 4680 cells, the more supply they have and the competition amongst those suppliers will lead to decreased costs over time. So we'd love for this to be true, but we will await official confirmation on this one. So Mark DiVittorio on YouTube shared this video of Giga Nevada and the roof. As you can see, the solar installation is continuing. Eventually, the plan is to have the entire roof covered, which we should see sometime in the next year or so. I'm showing you this because this was a huge debate early on between the Tesla bulls and bears at this factory. Many people said that they would never cover the whole roof. And then other people said that, well, they're just gonna buy their own solar panels to boost up their own numbers. So bears always have a way to twist things and make their arguments. But either way, I think this is great to see. And this was a newer updated perspective. As you can see, this was uploaded August 21st. So GM is actually now going to temporarily stop making the Chevy Bolt after the latest recall. So GM won't resume making the bolt until at least mid-September, so that's about two weeks from now. NGM had initially stopped production last week because of the chip shortage. But now the recall repair process is also on hold as GM is still wanting to get new battery models from its supplier, LG. They said, we will not resume repairs or restart production until we're confident LG is producing defect-free products for us. And of course, this is not a great look for the EV industry at large because when you zoom out and think about what's going on in this space from a general general public perspective, you have NHTSA and Tesla investigation, you have all kinds of car fires, you have recalls for the Chevy Bolt, which believe it or not, is one of the most popular EVs after Tesla. So the EV industry at scale is going through some growing pains at the moment, but I guess it's to be expected as we start to go from that 
one percent market share to you know between two and five to three percent now in some areas and that's what you're going to have on the way up the s curve so nothing should be surprising here but it will be really nice once we get through the next few years of growing pains and hopefully get to a place where there is more stability and more general acceptance that evs are actually the way floydian5 on reddit shared a picture of some turkish tesla owners there were also some non-tesla ev owners some id3 owners etc that showed up for an EV parade held for National Victory Day. So for your TIL or Today I Learned, the holiday commemorates the decisive victory in the Battle of Dumlu Pinar, the last battle in the Greco-Turkish War on August 30th, 1922. Following the battle, the Greek presence in Anatolia ended. So I think back in 2019, this story about this burnt Model X on the middle of a frozen lake surfaced, and now we get some answers as to what actually happened. The US Secret Service found that the owner, Michael Gonzalez, was tricking the Tesla purchasing system, basically ordering Tesla vehicles, only paying the deposit, and then reselling them, and then not actually paying for the full vehicle himself. Gonzalez did that five times, but for the last vehicle, he didn't get a registration certificate, meaning he couldn't prove ownership and he couldn't sell the car, which is why they were saying that he decided to set a fire on the lake. He was charged with five counts of possession and sale of a stolen vehicle, facing up to 10 years in prison for each car. So it's good to see justice being served on this one. From Tesla Roddy, Tesla overtakes a Volkswagen, Ford, and Norway as the Model Y is dominating August EV sales. Taking a look at the chart from JPR, here we have it, Tesla shooting up from the bottom spot and looks like they are on pace to be in the number one spot here in the next few weeks. And Troy Tesla shared some very interesting data about the take rate for the FSD in Teslas over time. So as you can see, this goes back to quarter four of 2016, this image, and it spiked up around quarter two, 2019. And then we have seen this gradual decrease for each model up into quarter two of 2021. So on his Patreon, he did share exactly why he believes this was happening. But here's the explanation and the context that I think is important. So the FSD take rate jumped in quarter two, 2019 because Tesla changed FSD from including nothing to including all existing main features. Until then, there had been a $5,000 enhanced autopilot option, which was very popular. It included all the existing features, Buyers could add FSD on top of enhanced autopilot by paying an additional $3,000, but at the time, FSD didn't really have any features. The buyers would pay for it in the hopes that the features would be released in the future. Therefore, the FSD take rate was low. But then Tesla moved all the major features from enhanced autopilot to FSD and made basic autopilot standard for free. The $5,000 enhanced autopilot option was gone, and the only option buyers could add was FSD, which was now $6,000. So I thought that context was really important to share because if somebody just sees this chart, they might think to themselves, well, what's going on? Why is the take rate for FSD decreasing? Is it bad? Is it the headlines? Is it the media? Well, obviously context is important. So some of it has to do with how Tesla was actually offering the features and the packages. It was different here, it was different here, and now it's different here. So over time, this will obviously ebb and flow. And another thing that's really important to remember, I think as the average cost of the vehicle becomes lower with time, so as Tesla enters the lower, more mass market vehicle, I think the take rate will decrease because those people aren't gonna have the $10,000 like a Model S or X purchaser would. So you also have to keep that in mind to some degree as well. Tesla Club India shares some CCS2 supercharger units are now in India awaiting installation. They're assuming these are probably V2, 150 kilowatt superchargers. Why they wouldn't get V3, I am not sure. If any of you have a best guess, please let me know. Ali on Twitter shared some data. Tesla has 79% of all EVs registered in the US, asking where is the competition? This was originally shared by Now You Know. So here's the headline and here is the chart with the data. And I'm showing you this not just as a reminder, but because Elon said this might be part of the problem and he shared an article from The Verge, GM warning owners not to charge their bolts in or near their homes overnight. But in the same thread, we might actually get a feature update. Elon was asked, is it worth the engineering time to make the proximity sensor chimes be directionally projected from the corresponding speakers in the cabin and with volume relative to the distance? Seems we could do better than chimes too. And Elon said, good point, agreed. So to actually have responsive and adaptive sounds, whether it's chimes or something else coming from different speakers as your car gets close to certain objects, 
could be pretty cool. I'm not sure how hard it would be to implement something like that, but maybe it's something we see in the future. But that's all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. I hope you have a wonderful day and a big, big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.